So what's up guys? Welcome to the another um, episode of our discussion and for this time I'm going to discuss the fifth lesson. So this is the second to the last lesson uh, we're ha we have this semester and for this time I'm going to discuss results change in perspective on the Spanish rule. So in this chapter or in this module ay uh, dito natin i-discover or dito natin matutuklasan kung paano nag-iba ang pananaw or perspective ni Rizal sa pamamalakad meron ang mga Espanyol. Okay? So from the from the previous lessons natin from the very start uh, kung paano nag-shift ang kamalayan ni Rizal hanggang sa ito nga nagbago na ang pananaw niya sa pamamalakad ng mga Espanyol. Okay, so let's start. So in this module uh, I'm going to present the circumstances that led to results change in perspective on the Spanish rule from being a propagandist, asking for reforms, and campaigning for assimilation to having more aggressive stance against the corruption of leaders, particularly nga ay ang mga praile. So in the first section, the indolence in the Spanish colonial rule. Yan. Uh, here, I'm going to discuss the root causes why the Spaniards call the Filipinos indolent or bakit nga ba tayo inakosahan ng mga Espanyol na tamad daw. Okay? So, in the second section naman, Rizal's abandonment of assimilation, uh, I'm going to tackle the circumstances that made Rizal reconsider the idea of assimilation and turn to other means of achieving reformation. So, dito ay ating iisa-isahin or ating hihimayin ang mga dahilan ni Rizal kung bakit nga ba siya nagbago ng pamamaraan or bakit muntika na siyang sumuko upang kam, umak, upang kamtan o kamtin ang upang makamtan ang kalayaan ng Pilipinas. So dito ay ating uh, tutuklasin ang mga hindi pagkakaunawaan ng mga propagandista. In the last section naman, il filibusterismo, of course, we're going to focus on the significant changes and results ideas from no limitangere to il filibusterismo. So yun ang ating mga uh, tatalakayin sa module na ito. And let's start with the first section. Yan. Indolence and the Spanish colonial rule. The section 1. Alright. Here, uh, I'm going to present the other works of Rizal written after the publication of his first novel, No Limitangere. Okay? So, alam naman natin, after ma-publish ni Rizal ang No Limit Tangere, ay naging aktibong bahagi siya ng uh, La Solidaridad, ang pahayagang kanilang itinatag, kasama si Graciano Lopez Haina at saka si Marcelo H. Del Pilar. So, in this section, ay specifically magpo-focus tayo in his two articles sa La Solidaridad, ang The Sobre La Indolencia de los Filipinos at Los Agricultores Filipinos were both critic the Spaniards' accusation that the Filipinos were indolent. So, dito, aalamin natin bakit nga ba tinawag ng mga Espanyol o bakit tayo inakusahan ng mga Espanyol na indolent or tamad. Okay. So, Yan, shortly after Rizal published his first novel, No Limitangere, he became an active contributor to the bi-weekly newspaper La Solidaridad. So, two of his essays published on the newspaper were Sobre la Indolencia de los Filipinos, 1890, and Los Agricultures, uh, Agricultures 1889. Okay. Uh, yan. So... Yan. However, um, he believed that such indolence was not inherent but was caused by the climate of the Philippines, both in physical sense as tropical country and in a socio-political socio -political sense in relation to the social disorders rooted in the Spanish rule. So makikita niyo dyan, sa sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos, uh, he acknowledged Gregorio Sanchanos' El Progreso de Filipinas, which published 1881, and of course, he also recognized the evident indolence of the Filipinos. So, ginawa niyo ang pattern, ang article ni Gregorio Sanchano, na 
El Progreso de Filipinas. So for Rizal, indolence can ultimately be traced to the abuse and discrimination experienced by Filipinos under the Spanish rule, which led to the deterioration of Filipino values. Furthermore, he pointed out in his essay that it was imperative to study the causes of such indolence so that proper solution could be conceptualized. Okay? Yeah. He compared it to an illness by saying that the indolence of Filipinos must be properly diagnosed before a prescription could be made. Specifically, there were the economic policies implemented by the Spaniards that required Filipinos to pay unreasonable taxes or tributo and render polo e servicio that mandated forced labor or labor on Filipino males 16 to 60 years old for 40 day period. I know you are all familiar dito sa tributo at saka sa polo e servicio this has been discussed to you during your readings in Philippine history and we all know kung gaano paghihirap ang naranasan ng mga Pilipino way back before 19th century di ba so the product, sabi niya the productivity of the Filipinos was gauged through whether they served a purpose to the Spaniards Filipinos were tagged indolence once they showed any disagreement or resistance to what as uh, what is being asked to them so during that time sa tributo or sa 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 polo e servicio uh, once na ang mga pilipino ay hindi sumunod sa mga kastila o sa mga espanyol sa mga fraile agad naman nila itong uh, sinasabihan or inaakasuhan ng mga tamad pero syempre knowing all the the uh, the, the, the sacrifices they've got during that time ay eh, hindi inya sino ba namang hindi tatama rin sa pagtatrabaho okay, so ating aalamin or ating aalamin kung ano yung naging stand ni Rizal tungkol doon yan, so in the essay Rizal linked two factors to the indolence of two Filipinos first was the limited training and education provided to the Filipinos for the Spanish government which they feared possible insubordination and retaliation pangalawa uh, was the lack of national sentiment of unity among Filipinos caused by the stigma, uh, stigma that Filipino culture was inferior to foreign culture which compelled humble submission. Yeah. So given these factors, Rizal concluded that the solution to Filipino indolence was education and liberty, uh, liberty from oppression. So yun yung dalawang dahilan na nakita ni Rizal kung bakit tamad ang mga Pilipino at anong kulang sa kanila. Bakit sila nag-come up sa ganitong values? Now, uh, let's proceed sa kanyang uh, pangalawang essay na nipublish dun sa La Solidaridad, ang Los Agricultores Filipinos. Okay, so in the essay, in this essay, Los Agricultores Filipinos, Rizal recommended to the Minister of Colonies to consult Filipino dealers who could or who would be affected by any agrarian problem and to assist them. So he pointed out that calamities were not solely to blame for the poor harvest of the Filipino farmers, but rather the abusive colonial policies such as polo e servicio that minimize the productivity of farmers. Also, uh, he brought to attention the problem of banditry and thievery in rural farms. Okay. So, uh, kasi ang ginawa niya, he urged farmers in the pitan to use fertilizers and farm machines to maximize the use of their lands. Kasi, uh, dito sa essay niya, sa article niya na Los Agricultores Filipinos, dito niya inilahad yung kanyang uh, uh, mungkahi tungkol sa pamamalakad ng mga farmers, uh, ng mga farm sa Pilipinas, dito rin niya inilathala ang kanyang recommendation sa gobyerno kung paano makakatulong or paano matutulungan ang mga local farmers. Yan, nakalagay dito. Yan, in Los Agriculturas Filipinos, yan, Rizal commended the, the intention of the Spanish colonizers to develop agriculture in the Philippines as a means to social and economic advancement. When he was exiled in the Pitan, Rizal dedicated much of his time tending the farm he bought in Talisay. In his farm, he used modern agricultural methods he observed in his or he uh, in his travels in Europe. And so that was the time when he was exiled in the uh, in, in the Pitan. Ang kanyang pinagkaabalahan ay pagpa-farming and lahat ng natutunan niya sa Europa ay kanyang inapply dito at yun, madami siyang realization. 
dami sang re- realization during that time so uh, saan ba yun? yan yung sa thievery, uh, th- thievery and banditry in the world of arms alam naman natin kahit ngayon existing pa rin siya may mga part pa rin sa ating bansa na kung saan existing pa rin yung pagnanakaw or yung uh, kalupitang nararanasan ng ating mga farmers so yung kahirapan bakit? kasi uh, during that time uh, noong 19th century the inability of colonial guards to provide adequate protection to the farmers and their farmlands prompted result to urge farmers to be equipped with guns to defend themselves against the lawless elements. Thus, Rizal demanded from Ministry of Colonies uh, urgent solutions to these problems. Pero, as we expect, ano ba naman ang ating aasahan during that time nung nag-request si Rizal sa gobyerno na bigyan niya ng uh, kapangyarihan ng mga local farmer na protektahan na kailangan mga sarili. Pero, as we expect, hindi naman ito pinahingga ng gobyerno. So, yun, yun lang yung dalawang uh, article na pinablish niya sa La Solidaridad. Ang sobre la indolensya de los Filipinos na tumutukoy sa katamaran ng mga Pilipino, sa mga asakosasyon ng mga Kastila tungkol sa katamaran ng mga Pilipino, at yung isa naman los agriculturist Filipinos yung paglalahad ng kanyang mungkahi sa gobyerno kung paano susuportahan at poprotektahan ng, ang mga local farmers during that time so that's the end of discussion for this section